In Activity 11, Helicopters, students experiment with whirly gigs to learn the principles of helicopter flight. They first name the parts of a helicopter and relate the shape of the rotor blades to an airfoil. Students then discover how spinning rotor blades produce lift and thrust. You will need the following material from the kit. Activity Sheet 11, Parts A and B, Whirly Gigs, Foam Glider from Activity 10, and a propeller from a foam glider. You will also need to provide glue and scissors. To prepare for Session 1, make a copy of Activity Sheet 11, Part A for each student. You will need a fully assembled foam glider, an extra glider propeller, a pair of scissors, and some glue. You will also need a whirly gig to show students. To begin Session 1, hold up a foam glider and review briefly what students have learned about fixed wing flight. Then, remove the wing, horizontal tail stabilizer, and propeller with nose assembly from the foam glider. Use a pair of scissors to trim the glider to the shape shown in Figure 11-3. Place the propeller with nose assembly on the top edge of the fuselage. Then, put a dab of glue on the stem of the other propeller and poke it through the tail. Hold up the finished piece for students to see and encourage students to recognize it as a helicopter. Next, distribute Activity Sheet 11, Part A, to each student and bring their attention to the diagram of the helicopter at the top of the page. Review the parts of a helicopter with students by asking, how is a helicopter different from an airplane? If necessary, explain that an airplane has a long fuselage to which the wings and a tail assembly are attached. A helicopter has a shortened fuselage, no wings, and a small tail. Also, most helicopters have one very large propeller above the fuselage and a smaller one attached to the tail. Further explain that the main rotor is the large propeller-like object above the fuselage. The main rotor can have from two to four blades. The tail rotor is the smaller propeller at the tail. Ask students, how can a helicopter fly if it does not have wings? Some students may say that the main rotor lifts the helicopter into the air. Draw their attention to the cross-sectional diagram of the rotor blades on their activity sheets. They should recognize these as airfoils. Then ask, what do you suppose happens when these rotor blades spin? Students will probably conclude that rotor blades behave just like propeller blades, but instead of pushing the aircraft forward, they push it up. To conclude Session 1, assemble a whirly gig and hold it up for students to see. Then, inform students that in the next session, they are going to use this toy to learn how helicopters achieve lift. To prepare for Session 2, make a copy of Activity Sheet 11, Part B, for each student. Each team of two will need a whirly gig. Students will also need to refer to Part A. To begin Session 2, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 11, Part B, to each student and have students bring their activity sheets and a pencil with them to the launching site. You will also need to bring the whirly gigs with you. Divide the class into teams of two and give a whirly gig to each team. Instruct students to assemble their whirly gigs by attaching the rotor to one end of the stick. To launch the whirly gigs, hold them away from the body and point them straight up. Students should hold the stick between the palms of their hands and spin it in a counterclockwise direction. Tell students to launch their whirly gigs again, but this time to tilt them forward. Students should observe their whirly gig move both forward and up. Explain that on real helicopters, the pilot tilts the main rotor forward to produce thrust, which makes the aircraft travel forward. Then, have students launch their whirly gigs again, first tilting the rotor to the left, then to the right. They should observe that this time the whirly gig moves to the left or the right in the same direction that the rotor was tilted. When they have finished their trials, bring students back to the classroom and have them look at the pictures at the bottom of Part B on their activity sheets. Instruct them to draw the rotor blades on each helicopter at the angle that corresponds to their direction of movement. Then, point out the diagram of the helicopter at the top of Part A of their activity sheets and ask students, what do you think the tail rotor is for? Students may suggest that, like an airplane tail, the tail rotor stabilizes the helicopter in flight and helps it turn. Explain that the tail rotor keeps the helicopter body from spinning in the opposite direction as the main rotor spins, and the tail rotor helps the main rotor execute turns. Let students know that helicopters are considered the most maneuverable of all the aircraft because they can move in any direction, hover in place, fly fast or slow, and take off and land in very small spaces. Ask students, what kind of work are helicopters well suited for? 
Students are probably aware of some of the many roles helicopters play, such as monitoring traffic, transporting injured people to hospitals, and search and rescue missions. Finally, inform students that in the next and final activity, rockets, they are going to learn about the least maneuverable but by far the most powerful type of flying machine. To conclude session two, collect the whirly gigs and return them to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.